Hello and good morning, my friends. Some of you are joining me from Too Cool for School Facebook page. Welcome. Some of you are just tuning in wherever you are, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Welcome. Today we are going to be doing the flamingo painting. And this is really fun because we are going to take acrylic paints and turn them into watercolors. Now, I don't know if you've ever painted with watercolors before, but they can get a little frustrating if you don't um, know how they work or um, uh, blending them right or, you know, the colors mixing. And that's what happened to me with mine. It almost made it um, more fun, I, I think. Um, if you could see in my leg, it kind of, the paint kind of went out, but I think that kind of gives it a good abstract feeling, but then we'll come back in later and take that marker and really define our flamingo. Um, yeah, so let's get started. Um, going over quick supplies, we're gonna need a Sharpie or a paint marker, a paint pen. You've got your pencil and eraser. I've got my different brushes I like to use. I've got my paint palette, which already has my blue in it. Because I have done this video a few times <laughs> with different things happening on, um, happening in the background. Um, I've got my jar of water and my paint. So let's go ahead and rock and roll. I'm gonna move my paint pen. I'm gonna put this guy onto the side here and hopefully we won't lose him. I'm gonna move my brushes over here. That way we can get a full view of both. So you'll always have a reference here. Okay, so let's get starting, starting to draw. I'm gonna go about four inches up on my canvas and hit about the center. And then from the four inches, I wanna go three and a half down. So that's our, our first flamingo leg, the start of it. I'm gonna do another one, a parallel line right down beside it. Kinda thick, it should be a little more twiggy, but that's okay. Then I'm gonna start at the top from my last line, kinda kick it outward, and then we're gonna make it look like a triangle by bringing it inward and a little bit down. So from there, this guy's got like two fingers and a thumb. I don't know if that makes sense to anyone, um, and that doesn't look big enough. So I'm gonna bring it down. So I've got these two little fingers He's got a little thumb, and I'm gonna bring it up back to the triangled area and make a little knuckle. Then I'm gonna bring it from the top of that triangled area back down. So it almost looks like a backwards four. I'm gonna go ahead and erase the lines inside the leg because we want to give the effect that his bent leg is in the forefront in front of his other leg. Okay, I'm gonna level those lines out so they match. Then I'm gonna bring my big paintbrush in. And I'm gonna start at about an inch in on the canvas. So that way I know his chest is gonna be about here. Then I'm gonna remove my brush. And I'm gonna go ahead and start making a curved line that connects to the bottom where his legs are. And start with a few tail feathers here and then from the last tail feather I'm gonna bring it up and around so it meets right here about the neck area fixing my line I fell off my canvas here all right so from there I want to take, I'm going on the inner line here where I left off, and then I'm going to curve it up and around so I have this beautiful back of the neck and the head, and then I'm going to stop it, stop the head right about there. Then I'm going to come in from here and draw a beak down, and then I'm going to bring it up. Then I'm going to take the outer part of the neck, and that's where I curve it in to connect to the beak. I'm going to erase one of my top lines here. 
All right, now next is the eye. Um, so right where the beak meets the head, I'm going to draw an eye in between. From the bottom of that eye, I'm gonna connect it to the bottom of the head here. And then the top of the beak, I'm gonna to continue to extend it to the eye. And then we're going to draw um, from the line that extended from the eye down to the head, about midway through that line, I'm gonna draw the mouth part in the beak. All right, erase any lines you don't like and make sure all your erasers gone off the canvas. And we're gonna go ahead and start painting. Oh, you know what, I forgot. Let's back it up just a second. I forgot the wing feathers. So let's come in a little past the legs. We're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. So now we've got some little wing feathers. Um, I'm just trying to look, that might be too far back. I might take that sixth one away and then add, add one in the front here. There we go. Perfect. Okay, I think it's time to start painting, my friends. Let's go ahead and set our pencil and eraser aside and go ahead and grab your big flat head brush. And we're just gonna dip it in the water and we're gonna start adding it to the canvas, but not the flamingo. So, if you want, I like to take and just kind of outline my subject. That way I know that I don't want water past that point. It's a little easier to do when there's color, you can see it, but that's okay. <clears throat> gonna get this out of the way this is probably the hardest part is just maneuvering through the flamingos beautiful curves so I'm gonna get this out of the way you don't want too much water if you have to dip again just do a little bit maybe even wipe the brush off in the wipe some of the water off I have um, <clears throat> like I mentioned done this video a few times so with that, I've also learned about this lovely acrylic water paint. And I have it bleed onto my flamingo, my very first try. Well, this guy is my first try, so <clears throat> I'm just glad it turned out okay. <laughs> it was a lot of trying to fix the, the run on with colors. watercolor is um, it's beautiful the way it's done I just have to take time and be patient with it because I'm not used to using it I'm, I'm more of an acrylic baby I think that's why I can enjoy moving on to a new form of painting sometimes Be really careful around the feet too and those legs. A little dabble do ya. <clears throat> All right, now that we have completely wet the outside of the flamingo. I'm gonna have you put your blue and just put a dot onto your plate, onto your palette, just a small dot. Then I want you to load your brush four times and drip water. One, two, three, four, right into your paint and make it a watercolor. Now this is still really thick and rich in color. So um, my paint is my paintbrush is now loaded. I think there's a lot of dark blue on it, so I'm going to dip it in the water, and then go straight to my canvas. 
and then I'm going to use horizontal strokes and I'm going to brush downward. And then I'm just going to be very careful once again to not get my flamingo. And it's okay if you do, it's not a big deal. Um, I like I like my tie-dye flamingo is what I like to call it, <laughs> if the color's mixed. Okay, let's do that again down here. I'm just taking some of the paint I kind of dabbed my brush off with um, around my paint palette because it really does, this paint goes a long way when you make it a watercolor. I love this idea the first time I heard of it. Watercolor acrylics? What? So cool. Okay, bring that all the way down. So it's going to be a smooth transition from sky to water for this guy, I think. Be very careful around the legs once again. I'm going to get a little more water and bring it over here. I want to, if you feel like your acrylic's wet but you don't have like that water puddle, I recommend getting a little more water than to get that water puddle. Um, it really makes a difference on how your paint, how your painting turns out. Um, it gives it more of that watercolor feel. Flinging it onto my other paint. Took it easy there. Okay, just coming in and doing the legs. I'm gonna go this way just to grab the uh, the water. Nice and careful around the flamingo again. And then smooth it out with a horizontal stroke. I know sometimes you can't do those horizontal strokes. I get it. Need more water. And it's okay if you don't have a lot, a lot of blue for around the flamingo's face up here. I'm going to switch hands. Continue. I'm just going to take the paint from over here just to give me a little more blue. Oof. Kind of crazy doing it left handed. Give props to all my lefties. Struggle is real. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to grab some water. A little more. A little more of the paint off the side. Now, if you grab your pencil line, that's okay. It's not that big of a deal. I just did myself. It's not like it's going to stop it from doing whatever it's going to do because it's a watercolor. It's free like a bird. <laughs> okay, I want to put a little more around here. Now I have a stretched canvas. If you do too, you can paint the sides if you like. <clears throat> All right, if the blue is done, you can kind of start to see it spread out into the canvas itself. This is the, the fun part. Okay, we're going to rinse our brush out. Now we're going to throw in some, a dot of violet. And we're going to do the same thing. Load that dot of violet with a bunch of water. One, two, three, four. Mix that up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take, um, I'm just patting it, I'm going to take and I'm hoping there's still a lot of water. I'm just going to kind of make some water marks, I think. Okay, 
you don't want this is just a hint of purple so don't don't do too much we don't want to take away from from anything it's just pretty to see in your picture <coughs> they had even mentioned that you could do a little um, green up here toward the sky area and I thought oh how pretty I didn't do that one all right rinse your brush make sure there's no paint now we're gonna take our pink and just put a dot in a different area I guess a paint palette would be more of your friend during this but I'm sure you are creative with what you got maybe you used some other bowls that's an option too Oh, that's another thick, rich one. I think I put too much paint in that one. That's okay. We're gonna <clears throat> rinse it out really well and start over. So now we're going to start with our, our flamingo. I almost called it a penguin. <laughs> our flamingo. I think I need to add more water to this. Now I'm going to take and just start at the bottom of the flamingo. That's going to be the darkest area. I went and just went ahead and grabbed that deep rich paint that was at the bottom of my, my water hole there. So now just go ahead and start to blend it into the flamingo. So just like watercolors, um, your first strokes on there are going to be pretty solid. You can come back and glaze over them again later too. But you want to try to just get what you like the first time around. Because the minute it dries, that's going to be your, your permanent line. There is a way to fix that. Like I said, you can just go back over it again. But maybe the goal, too, is to just leave it and work with it. See how that doesn't change your painting. So it should be light pink by the time you get up here to the head. Ever so light. If you want more definition, too, this now's the time while it's saturated to just bring in more pink. That way those hard lines, like I was saying, with a watercolor won't stick around. You can blend it now. Blend now or forever hold your piece. All right. So I've got the flamingo body done. I think I might want to take it. I can see where I stopped with my blue. I might want to stretch my pink all the way out if I can. Perfect. Okay. Let's do the legs. This one I'm going to just um, take my brush and upright, I'm dipping it into the paint. And then upright, I'm just going to scratch it downwards on the legs. So these are going to be rich, dark pink. too much water and that's okay it'll expand into the blue but it'll be it'll be okay okay and then from here Take some of that pink off your brush and you're going to want to give the illusion like his foot is in the water so we're going to want to continue making um like a little foot so i've got one little finger and two little fingers and then you've got a 
little thumb. Perfect. How are you guys doing? I'm seeing some stuff I can fine tune already. Like my blue around the leg, but I want to let it dry to let it do its thing. So see my pink is now expanding into the blue on the leg, which is totally fine. I had my blue expand into the beak, but that's totally fine because we're going to use colors to um, be able to blend that and use our marker later. All right, our next move is the orange. So let's put a little orange in there. Just a tiny dot. We don't need a lot. Okay, load our brush. Bring the water back. One, two, three, four loads of brush. Um, four loads of water in the brush. <laughs> Mix that around. Um, that's really rich in pink too, so I'm going to rinse. I'm going to start over again. I'm going to dip it in. We're going to come to the bottom of the flamingo and we're just going to kind of blend orange into our pink. I did notice when I did this my first time that I really enjoyed doing layers on the flamingo. Um, but I noticed when I did that I kept doing a repetitive circle of trying to fix things as well. Um, so have fun with it if you want. If you want to, if you want to go ahead and donate it to science, for lack of better words, and just play with your painting and see what you come up with. I think that'd be cool. I'm gonna do a little pink in the tail over here. So this is these are new water lines now that I'm putting on because my my flamingo is pretty dry. Oh, I do recommend you do not use a hair dryer at all on this. My watercolor people, I think, would understand the reasoning for that. But if you use the hair dryer, you are more likely to have your flamingo spread all over the place, <laughs> which may be cool too. All right, let's see what that dries out to be. I'm gonna bring a little more darkness up here to the neck. All right, go ahead and clean your brush out really well. Um, let's take a look here. What do we want to do next? I kind of want to put a little more blue around my leg. Oh, so definitely not enough water. all I wanted to do. Maybe some here. My goal is to just take my pencil lines away. So I'm adding more paint around areas that will cover that up a smidge more. I love learning to play with these watercolors. It's definitely different from acrylic paint. All right. I think I'm satisfied with my care. All right, our next move is going to be the eye and the beak. So we need to have black and white now in our palette, just a dot of black and just a dot of white. So I like to take the, we've managed to so far only use the big flat brush. I promise you we'll use the rounded one. Um, so we're going to take the end of our pencil and dip it in the black. 
uh, now in that eye that you created. Mine's kind of big, so I'm just going to dot and then I'm going to roll my brush around to kind of give a big, thick eye. Okay, I'm going to wipe the end of my paintbrush off now. And this one's a little tougher. Okay, so I am going to take my smaller flat brush and give it a little wet here. And I'm going to paint the beak white. I just want the whole thing white. So it gives it a smooth texture on there a little bit later. We are going to be blending, well, trying not to blend the black um, into it. It'll still be a little wet here. But you'll see what I mean in just a second. I don't want to get ahead of the game here. So just paint that beak white. It's okay if you go over your pencil line. Beak is white. Okay, so now from this point, I kind of like to pick up my canvas and see, just roll it around in the light to see what areas are still saturated. We know we have a wet beak. So what's going to end up happening is I'm going to take that small flat brush again and I'm going to just bring it to a really flat, crisp point and I'm just going to barely tip, um, put the tip of the brush in the black and I'm going to take and start that mouth line and I'm just going to draw right down into the beak. That way it doesn't give us time to have it mix and become gray. I'm gonna dip it back in the black and then I am now going to do the curve at the tip of the beak. I'm just gonna outline my beak where it's gonna be black. Do this one in sections because the white is still in there and it's going to want to pull through one stroke at a time here okay. i'm going to take a second here to see what else is wet still? My purpose of looking at this is to, my next move is going to be his wing feathers here. We want to accent that. Um, so let's see if our, for the most part, my water down here is dry. So I'm going to want to take my rounded brush. I'm going to get that wet. I'm going to dip it. I'm not going to pat dry it. I'm just going to dip it right into the white and probably back into the jar. So now I have the wet paint. Now I want to make the um, water marks, the water rings that go around the flamingo's foot. So you can go back through and make this as um, iridescent as possible make it that's that was the look I really liked I really came in and just brushed kind of blended that white right into the blue background just kind of give it more of an iridescent almost not there look but still there 
that makes any sense. I thought it uh, blended better with our watercolor theme when I did that. Now you just have this very faint, um, like he stepped in a puddle. Now the water's moving. From there, go ahead and get your brush wet again and get a little more white paint. We're gonna dip it in the water again. And now we're gonna give these little ripple waters down here by him. Ever so faint. Awesome. Okay. I'm going to go back to my flat brush with black and do another coat on the beak. Try to do just one stroke. You don't want to lift that white up. Looking better already. All right, now we are going to take our, we're gonna go back to our rounded brush. We're gonna dip it back into the white. Well, you could get it watery too again. Dip it back into the white. I want these to be a little more solid looking, so we're just gonna do for the feather of the wings, we're just gonna kind of brush a little line over each um, feather in the wing. And then we're gonna come up here and do a little feathers on the top of him. There, pretty. Have you guys ever been, ever seen a flamingo in real life? I have at the zoo, but I have not, like I feel like Florida has a lot of flamingos. Maybe that's just the, um, oh, I can't think of the word. Uh, maybe that's just what the, uh, dang it. I hate when I can't think of the word I'm trying to say. <laughs> Where people think, um, mostly about a certain thing and it's not really the stipulation to the, the, uh, issue or the, concern. Anyway, whatever that word is. <laughs> um, I added a little more white to the beak up here uh, because I noticed my black extended out so it almost looked like a beak covering so I just wanted to make it more flawless to be all one beak. Um, what else do we have left to do here? Um, we did the ripples. We did the feathers. Ooh, I think it's looking done guys. I'm so excited about this. What I do want to do at this moment is take the time to just kind of go in and fill any more of those cracks that are white. Um, it's drying right now, so we're just kind of lollygagging um, at the moment. And I may even just, I'm going to give some more definition to the feathers here. A little bit darker around here. Give a little shading. Please feel free to shade any way that you'd like as well. Give a little more shading up and around here too. Get some more water though. Perfect. So I don't think we will be able to um, marker our flamingo together. So what I'm going to have you do at this point is hopefully you've got the picture. It's definitely on the Facebook page. Uh, it's definitely here in the video and you can just see where I outlined everything on this flamingo. I, I went outside of the eye. I made the eye a little bit bigger. Um, I just did all our pencil marks and I went and highlighted it all in the black even the feathers. And I think that brings our flamingo painting to an end. Um, I hope you all had fun with this acrylic watercolor. Um, I did and I can't wait to see what it looks like uh, when it dries. 
Um, hopefully these puddles will scatter out a little more. If not, that's okay because that gives it the watercolor effect. Um, and if you have any questions, um, want to share pictures, I would love to see the posts here on YouTube. I would love to see the posts on the Too Cool for School page. Um, I would just love it. I'd also love if you have an idea, holler at me. I would love to paint with you. Um, and I'd love to paint something that you would like as well. So with that being said, thank you all so very much for being here with me today. And I will see you next week. Bye.